Hello guys, I hope you are doing well. I'm Kasper and I'm software developer at Synergy Codes. In today's episode of Synergy Cafe, I would like to introduce you to the virtual reality world. And I'll call it VR just to save your precious time. So the title of today's episode is VR Time Is Now, how to create your first VR app. So let's look what we'll be doing today. First of all, I would explain what the virtual reality is and point the difference between VR and AR. Then I'll talk about my VR headset, which is Oculus Quest 2. I will explain what we want to achieve in our first VR app. Then we need to set up our project settings. We go through the sync creation and I will explain the code and the, at the end I'll present the results. Right, so what's VR exactly? Uh, as the name says, uh, it's a place when you are surrounded by virtual space. To jump into this space, you need to have a VR headset. Right, here I would like to mention the difference between other types of alternative realities, just to make you see the bigger picture. So we have virtual reality, as I mentioned before, where we are basically surrounded by the rendered image in the VR headset. Uh, in augmented reality, you can see the real world, but there are some rendered image at the actual reality and it can be used on smartphones as well and there's also a mixed reality which is a hybrid of VR and AR. Uh, probably you heard about VR before because there was a lot of hype around it but now with Oculus 2 we finally get an affordable and good product. Why? There are a couple of reasons. First of all uh, you can finally buy a decent VR headset without robbing a bank. At the price of 400 bucks you can easily jump into the alternative world. It has a decent image quality, so we won't be disappointed. And the big corporation is responsible for the maintenance of this project, so the support is really good. What I've discovered is that VR is mostly used for fun. There are a lot of very good games already, but I haven't seen any solid business VR app. I found one project, but I wasn't sure if it was a joke or really thing. Actually, it could be really fun to make some prototype of very simple diagram inside the VR world. So that's what I want to present today. How you can create your first VR app, not only for the entertainment purposes, but still having fun. Right, so as you can see on the picture, we have the diagram representation here. There are some connections between nodes, um, which we'll call links. And this should be controlled by the uh, Oculus controllers and we just keep it simple. Right guys, I hope that you have already installed the Unity because we will need it and once you install it, you have the Unity Hub program and once you open it, you, you should make sure that you have the same version as me so you can go to the install section and make sure that this version is also on your computer, this 2020.3.11 If not, then click Add and if it's not visible here, you can just click Download Archive and you will find it easily um, in case if you want to start a new project, click on projects and then click a new and make sure that you have 3D templates selected or you can just use mine and you can just click add button and link will be on the description, you can download it easily and then it's available on the projects. Alright, so let's begin with some quick Unity introduction. I would like to explain some main parts of the UI. So first of all, we have a scene. So I found a perfect explanation of it somewhere. So imagine that you are director of the scene and the scene is what you actually see from, the, from your preferred perspective. And uh, here we will place the object to create the scene. Uh, game is the actual view from the user's eye. As you can see, there is a camera icon on the scene and it's the view from this camera. We have hierarchy. So uh, uh, to explain how it works, I just like to drag something here or maybe create the new one. So I can create the new object here. Mm, let it be, for example, cube. And as you can see, this cube appeared on the scene as well on, as on the game. So the hierarchy is responsible for uh, keeping all of the objects that should be on the scene. And also, as you can see, uh, there's a difference between scene and game because I can move around the scene and the game is uh, at the same place. 
All right, great. And then we have the project uh, when we can just drag and drop some elements to the uh, scene. And it's like a template. It has some templates to use it on the scene. And also we have an inspector, uh, which inspects the objects and shows some more details on it. So let's create our first scene. Uh, and as you can see, I've already prepared something here, but there is something missing here. We don't have the front wall. And how we can create it? Or oh, we can just base it on some other object here. Let's make it from the floor, for example. So I just like to copy and paste it and name it front wall. And then uh, we know that uh, the, this object has uh, 10 by 10 units. And as you can see, we have a transform, uh, transform property here. So I just want to move it uh, by a half. So let's try to move it. And we also need to know the axis of it. As you can see on the scene, there is an axis indicator here. And I know that this will be the Z, uh, Z axis. So let me move it. And as you can see, it moved a little bit. Now we need to rotate it. And uh, as you can see, we should rotate it by X axis. And it's in degrees, so let's do it the 90 here. But it disappeared. Why? Because this object is one-sided. So actually we should move it uh, a little bit more by next 180 degrees. But we could do also the minus 90. And uh, what we can do also, we just need to move it a little bit up. And it should be the y-axis. So let me try. Voila, we have the perfect scene now. Okay, so let's now try to integrate with the Oculus. And what we should do here is we should uh, go to the window, Asset Store, and we need to download the actual Oculus integration. You will find it on the store. Uh, once you found it, click Open in Unity, and then we'll have the window with the possibility to import it. So click on Import. I've already did it, so I don't need to do it again. Uh, now we need to find in our project this OVR player controller and drag it to our scene. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, lower than we should expect. So I move it and we can remove the main camera because we'll need only the Oculus camera now. Okay, so now I need to add the hands to our model, to our camera. So let me find the custom hand left. I need to attach it to the left anchor and also the custom hand right to the right anchor. And okay, it looks promising. So let me test it now. Okay. Okay, it looks promising. So I can move with the left stick now on my scene. Uh, okay, I can rotate by the right stick. And yeah, it looks promising. Okay, so I've already prepared some complete scene with the whole application and I would like to explain the most important stuff that I've did here. I figured out the more complicated function, so don't worry, you don't, you don't need to do it alone. And the source code will be available in the video description. So let me just quickly explain how it works. Actually, we have this complete scene here. You can double click on it and this will appear here on the hierarchy. So um, let me jump to the code now. Uh, I just included all of the code on the scripts uh, game, uh, game object here. So uh, going to the code, uh, we have the OVR grabbable, which is actually the uh, overridden uh, one of the OVR functions from the Oculus integration. So I needed to do some adjustments here. And one of the adjustments is that I needed to modify the grab end method because um, yeah, the logic of the grabbing objects is that once you drop it, then it will flew away. So that's not expected behavior. We just want to stay it at the same place. So I just changed the velocity and angular velocity, which is a speed of the object when we drop it. So as you can see, I've set it to some vector, which is set to zero. And then this object will st stay at the same place. Next thing is the startling draw. And this is responsible for uh, drawing a links and Actually, what's going on here is that we just, once we click on the one of the buttons from the Unity controller, which is A button, then we instantiate the link, it will create the new object, and then we need to update some 
start position and end position, which I called port from and port to. And one of the, the port from is uh, matched with the port from tag, uh, which is just attached to the one of the uh, nodes. Um, and the port to is our hand, because at the start we should have end of our link to our hands. Uh, once we release the button, then we need to find this, find the closest port to, uh, which is also one of the node elements, and we just update the port to property. Uh, link position updater is um, actually um, responsible for update the recalculate the position of the links. The update function is called one per frame, so. As you can see here, we just uh, yeah, attach the points to the uh, line renderer. The line renderer is, is actually the link. Uh, we have some logic to remove links uh, as well. And we just, once one per a frame, uh, we just uh, check if there is a B button clicked. If it's clicked, then we just find the uh, link element and destroy it. Um, create palette is something that will be shown on the demo <laughs> later. So, um, it will create some of the nodes, uh, some of the prepared nodes, with some attached colors to also, and uh, mm, this will have the spawner tag, which means that it will not disappear once we drag it. So, uh, what I mean is that we just can create a copy of it, and that's the logic here. Uh, we can remove uh, nodes also, this very similar logic to the link remover, so we find the node tag. And the find closest by tag, which already was mentioned on the previous uh, scripts, is uh, just from the example of the one of the Unity's uh, tutorial. It will just find the closest uh, tag. I just changed it a little bit. It will find the closest tag from the uh, provided element. All right. Uh, so mainly that's it with regards to the code. So I think now we can jump to the app. All right, so as you can see, I'm on the created scene uh, and let me just look around it. Oh, it looks pretty good. Okay, so I think now I can just go to the nodes and let's check our functionalities. So I just drag two of them and yeah, I can check the linking functionality. So I press the A button. And yeah, as you can see, it's linked correctly. So here we have this port to element, this white one. And here we have the port from element. So it works correctly. All right, so let's check the removing elements now. So uh, let's start with the links. So I need to pre press the B button. And as you can see, the link disappeared. And now I can check the Note removing, so I need to press the X button and it looks fine. Okay, so I'll just try to create some simple visualization now. Uh, so let me just connect these nodes here. Uh, okay, and as you can see, so once we just uh, connect the green and red color, we just have the yellow color and it's represented here. What's uh, very good in the uh, VR is also that I can check it from the other perspectives. So I can move here and yeah, I will see it from the behind to sideways. Also looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, as you can see, it's a very simple application, as I said before, but actually it's extendable. So the idea could be that these nodes could be, for example, groups. So if I click on it, it could show some children here. Um, also, there could be some other things, not only the colors. It could represent some actual data. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just ideas for it. The link is in the description, so you can play with it. You can also extend the functionalities here. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. So thanks for your attention. Stay tuned and bye bye.